Mari Evans proclaimed, who can be born black and not exalt? It seems as if she has lived her life exalting in her blackness. She is a monumental figure in poetry and education and played roles in shaping women's history, politics, music, and drama. Her books of poetry include Continuum, I Am a Black Woman, A Dark and Splendid Mass, and Night Star. From 1968 to 1973, she worked as a producer, writer, and director of The Black Experience, a pioneering social political television show that aired on prime time in Indianapolis. In all of time, it has been our artists, our musicians, our poets, who have also been our prophets. She is the author of numerous articles and children's books. Her work has been included in hundreds of anthologies and textbooks, including translations into many other languages. Her poetic voice helped define the 1960s black arts movement. My fellow panelists and I were honored to recognize Mari Evans for her extensive and exceptional body of work. This is only the second time in the award's history that a Lifetime Achievement Award has been given. You have finally seen one person with no cell. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have a computer. No computer. I'm thinking about getting a computer, but I'm not thinking too hard. Do you identify yourself as a philosopher, a poet, a writer? I'm all of that. I'm a political writer. For all kinds of politics, or mainly African American issues, how would you describe your? I look at the world through a black lens. You moved here in 1947. Yes. What was it like to be a black woman in Indianapolis in 1947? Very much like what it is today. Have race relations changed much? Not much. There's cosmetic change. Of course, everybody smiles at everybody. And before, everybody avoided looking at each other. But now we do all look and we do smile. Still too segregated? I wouldn't say too segregated. I would delete the two and just say still two worlds. You'll never get over it being two worlds. It will be two worlds as long as there are uh, uh, discernible differences. In each cultural community, there are differences, there are disparities that are significant. We're always going to have different cultural communities. Nobody can expect to have the differences erased because they're there. When people say, I don't see color, either they're lying or some Samaritan their eyesight. The differences are cultural more than anything else, but they appear because of color. They're cultural, but color helps them jump out at you. I was a young poet in, in, in junior high, high school, and even uh, until my young adulthood. But I was influenced by being around other poets, particularly Mari Evans. I remember her book, the I Am a Black Woman. And it was in our home, and she used to come by our house. And she and my grandmother were good friends. They both shared similar personality traits. Very intelligent, very tenacious, very ferocious, vivacious. And, and they came up in a time where they were marginalized. But they leveraged that in a very special way and directed their rage into political activism, into poetry, and that poetry was able to move a nation. If you're fortunate enough to sit with her, she, she's a very beautiful woman, but she's very sage-like. 
and she has a quiet charisma and a dynamism that is magnetic and she kind of pulls you into her orbit and after she educates you enlightens you chides you she releases you back into the world to be a better person and I think that for our generation she represents what it means to be an American icon that's why we love her. I always walk my walk as an individual, not as part of a race, which sounds funny, even to me. <laughs> From the time I was born, I had no fears about the way I walked my walk. I knew God personally as a little girl, not just because I was born into a Christian family, I just came here with the understanding that there was a power greater than me, that I didn't have to worry about anything. The civil rights movement in the 60s, mm -hmm. um, you described yourself as an activist. I was. Uh, what, what all did you do? Well, the, what is it? They, I'm, I'm lo losing some language. They say your short term memory goes first, but, um, thing of limitations hasn't run out. That's why I can't, I shouldn't be telling you what I did. <laughs> that, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. You know, I did some stuff that uh, could have gotten me incarcerated and uh, I, I wouldn't take a minute of it back. I'm not ashamed of any of it. I'm just um, cautious. As an activist, you found another way to channel your politics in the late 60s and early 70s through a TV show called The Black Experience. Yes, uh, with one cameraman and no background in television, I decided to speak to the black community and to explain to the black community my political perception of what was happening to us as a family nation. Truth is love and beauty but hate and hostility are also true. This is a tribute to the black poet, Langston Hughes. And that was the direction I took the show. There are approximately 22 million Negroes in these United States. 115,000 of them live in Indianapolis. Come with us down the teeming streets, through the closed doors, behind the angry eyes. Come with us for a look at the black experience. The rest is history. The show ran for five years, 1968 to 1973, and uh, in prime time, it was a regional show, not local. I didn't get a nickel for doing it. I didn't have a nickel for a budget. So it was all up to me. Did I have the creativity with no information to carry a show? Well, it went on for five years. And uh, it was unheard of at that point in, in our national history. I'd like to be remembered as a quintessential jazz pianist, which I am not. That's an honest answer. And as a writer, as an influencer, as a philosopher? If people choose. Uh, as a philosopher, if I have said anything or can say anything that anybody finds useful, that's why I write. That should be the only reason any of us write, to put material out that can be useful to other people. There's never a word out of place in her writing, right? Never a word out of place. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to add an it or a comma or a punctuation. Everything is perfectly written. Miss Evans' work continues as an alarm clock urging those who have set time to plow through racial, political, social injustice in American society, to seek a higher sense of self. Who can be born black? Who can be born black and not sing the wonder of it, the joy, the challenge, and come together who can be born black and not exalt? Mari Evans, thank you.
When I die, I'm sure I will have a big funeral. Curiosity seekers coming to see if I am really dead or just trying to make trouble. <laughs> How much does that poem say about who you are? Everything. <laughs> yeah, people are still wondering if I'm just trying to make trouble. Are you? Without trouble and troublemakers, where would we be? I'm a black woman. The music of my song, some sweet arpeggio of tears, is written in a minor key and I can be heard humming in the night. I saw my mate leap screaming to the sea and I with these hands, cupped the life breath from my issue in the cane break. I lost that swinging body in a rain of tears and heard my son scream all the way from Anzio for peace he never knew. I learned Danang and Porkchop Hill in anguish. Now, my nostrils know the gas and these trigger-tired fingers seek the softness in my warrior's beard, I am a black woman, tall as a cypress, strong beyond all definitions, still defying place and time and circumstance, assailed, impervious, indestructible. Look on me and be renewed. Theolonius yes. Monk would be very happy with that. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't play it if he was in the house. <laughs> <laughs>